Hey everyone, this is Ravi. Uh, we're doing uh, something different. So we got, uh, typically I do videos on Rivian and other things and uh, we've been working getting uh, solar stuff done and storage and all that. Um, I wanted to do extra storage. We have about 30 kilowatts of uh, uh, battery storage with our solar system. I'll do a detail review on uh, or detail walk over the uh, actual solar panel and all that stuff. Uh, but I came across, uh, I was looking at a storage, as I said, uh, wanted to add more capacity, make it about 100 kilowatt, because uh, we generate a lot of sun, I mean a lot of energy, but we don't have a place to put it unless we are home charging cars, both, both of our cars are electric. So um, wanted to build something before I get started on what I got and uh, how I am planning on working on it. Um, just ideas, I want to thank a couple of people, uh, YouTubers and other people. Uh, First, David Paz, he's a great guy, done a lot of videos, inspired me to do some things that I wasn't comfortable with. Uh, we built a lot of things, but uh, solar was one of those things that I couldn't wrap my head around for a while, but since we've done it, it's pretty easy. Again, thanks. Uh, David Paz, he, um, Will Prowls, he got a lot of DIY videos, great guy, uh, does a lot of great reviews. Again, thank you for uh, putting all that stuff out there. Um, uh, other person I want to thank is uh, a lot of people uh, probably know if you watch David or Will's videos, um, Battery Hookup. Uh, they are great people, Tom and Ryan, uh, very knowledge knowledgeable, um, both are great people to work with, uh, have great deals on batteries and everything else. Last but not least, all the DIY YouTubers and the forms and everything else that it has to do with uh, building the house putting doors up or any kind of information that you're willing to share and uh, help everybody else out. And that's how I'm starting with this because uh, I figure there's a lot of people who are interested in these batteries and don't know where to start or just be similar situation where I am, just looking at pictures, trying to figure out how this overall is going to work out. Because um, I don't want to pay a uh, pre-bill, it's, it's, it's the quality and overall price um, you're paying about $1,500, $1,800 for a 5-kilowatt battery bank if you're looking at a 48-volt system. Uh, where What I'm planning on doing and a lot of DIYers they built, it's a quarter or half of the cost and you get better built just the way you want it. Um, so with that being said, let's get started with this. So here's the pellet. Um, one of the pellets I got from... Uh, battery hookup. So we're going to take this apart, see what we're dealing with. The second one's in a garage. Uh, these are quite heavy. They're uh, supposed to be uh, A plus grade cattle cells and 280 amp hours each. Each There's two banks in here. Uh, they're supposed to be 64 volts, two banks. Uh, looking at their uh, literature, you know, what Tom and uh, Ryan put out there for battery hookup. Again, they're, they're not sponsoring this video. I just want to say they're great people to work with. Uh, so what, what they have on their website, it's looked like a 64 or a 60 volt system, 20 cells, cattle cells, um, 280 amp hours, you know, 3.2 volts each. And uh, seems to be some sort of electric car or um, energy project uh, battery pack uh, that's designed for 60, 64 volt nominal. And uh, the, I'm planning on converting these into a 48 volt uh, 16s and then I'll have five packs because I got four of these well uh, Four packs of these so there's there's only I mean there's two on this Then I got another pallet with two more of these and again, they're quite heavy 300 350 pounds each uh, Total weight I think is 15 600 pounds for two pallets uh, So if you're planning on getting these get them deliver unless you got a Rivian or a heavy dude pick up um, They're in Philly. That's where these were I went and picked them up and you know again a lot of, lot of stuff that they have that's great for if you're planning on doing any type of uh, batteries or solar type of setup, they always have great deals on it. Uh, so let's get started opening this up. Uh, this is going to be a series of videos as I open up, go through uh, how I'm thinking this is going to work out. So overall, this is probably a lengthy video, but I think if you really want to make these cells, again, four of these will be about 70 plus kilowatt, um, which is, you know, 10, 12 grand, you're looking at seven Tesla powerful power walls for the price of maybe one or less. So a really great deal if you're willing to put a little bit of work into it. 
Um, like I said, I never built a big battery before. It's always been, I mean, built batteries, 12 volt, 24 volts, uh, pre-built, just wiring them up. And this is something I'm gonna have to modify to make it work uh, for my system. And I'll, like I said before, I will give a, a full tour of the system we have. So let's get started and uh, open this pellet and see what we got in there. Um, packed pretty nicely, looking outside the pellet. Um, it says 280 amp hours, 17 kilowatt. Um, so I'm guessing it's each pack. Um, that seems to be uh, what the battery hookup website said. It said 7.9. Um, I guess it's just close enough. All right, we got a good box here. So let's uh, open up this box. It's packaged pretty nicely. I think they're, uh, according to the battery hookup, they're brand new cells and uh, never been used. So we'll find out if they're really a brand new cells. Uh, space is limited here. So the garage is packed and this is where I gotta work. So let me get both of these out. Oh, this this just lifts up, so it's neat. I don't even have to open this. There we go. So let me get this out of the way. So these are the packs that we're looking at. There's two of these. Uh, Packaging is pretty nice. And uh, let's see how they look like. So this is the face of it. Um, let me get this opened up. Look like these are packed pretty good. Uh, two cells, I'm guessing 17 each. I'm gonna take this cover off and look that they're bolted to the side with uh, a couple of screws and uh, don't wanna be moving so I guess I should start with taking the side screws off, these ones right here, and uh, pull this piece off, a little plastic, and uh, see what we're looking at. Um, the, let's start with that. There's three brackets on each side that just latches to the plywood underneath it seems to be a two three quarter inch plywood um, that's pretty sturdy they've been packed pretty good a lot of space between the two of them I guess for movement but they also got these blocks from for the battery not to move left or right which is a Pretty good design. And since we're looking at a 60 volt system, it's not nothing dangerous here, nothing is connected. I'm pretty positive they have some sort of a relay or something that needs to be connected before this battery becomes live in a car or whatever application this is designed for. It's got a pretty face, look like uh, you got a a nice fan, I guess it's for venting. We'll figure out what we're looking at. Uh, negative positive terminal. Uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, I guess some sort of cover on it. Uh, seems to be just plastic held by a couple of these uh, 2468 clips. Rest of the pieces out. That's pretty good. And I guess take these out and then see where we go. This must be the BMS for this. And uh, it says 17 kilowatt, 64 volts, 280 amp hours. So I'm guessing each pack is 17. So this would be a 34 kilowatt at a 64 volt, which is pretty good. And uh, I guess it's got a separate circuit of the fan. BMS has got two leads going into it. So I'm guessing it's got 10 on each side. Um, it'd be a 20S configuration. So I'm going to pull these apart and see what we're looking at here.
Yes, I should have a pry tool for these little plugs, but this works. Oh, looking at the side, the battery looks pretty neat. Um, I guess these are cattle cells, and that's these, uh, from what I read, they're prismatic LFP4s. Uh, they're supposed to be grade A's, and it doesn't look used yet because there's no marking or anything on the terminals. Uh, look like a special connectors there. they come up pretty easy if you have a pry tool it would be easier but this will work just want to get in and see what we're looking at so here comes the hood how pretty So this should be 10 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That should be 10 also. So one of these are negative, one of these are positive. I'm guessing we'll figure that out in a second. And wires are done pretty nice. And each lead is welded, which is great. Welded cell is good. Only pain in the butt if you got to move these around, if you're planning on doing anything other than using this. And I think I'm gonna end up using this case because it's a quarter inch steel. Um, since these batteries are gonna be stationary, I'll probably just stick with the way they are. Um, they're already packed. Look like they got compression already on them. So I wouldn't have to worry about changing anything or compressing them. And having these air vents here, I'm guessing this fan blows air, comes through heat these so I can run a heat or cool through this. To keep the pack as we're in uh, in the northeast here it's going to be cold during winter and this pack is going to sit in the garage although all of the packs are going to sit in the garage so during winter i can run a heater under it and bring the temperature up and talk about heaters or temperature there's there's a temperature sensor here there's one here and i'm guessing there's got to be one here there's another one here so it's got four temperature sensors um, there's two ways I can go with this. Uh, one would, I would take first 16 cells, either left or right, whichever direction, uh, cut it and use that as a one and then take the four and add it to the next one. So you take 12 out of the pack here and then you start your negative positive and wire that up. And the way I'm thinking, I want to do 16 out of each one since I have four of those, so I'll have a negative or positive ending right here at one location. And then based on which, how much room I have in here, and I'll run the BMS and see where my negative positive, which side, either I go this direction or this direction for negative positive, uh, once I open this piece up. And then I'll take, um, instead of just wasting, because this will be a 12 volt pack after that, because I'm gonna cut this to 48 volt pack. So I'll take four volts out of each one of these, or four, pa four batteries, or 12 volt, and combine to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So with four of these, I'll have five packs built at about 14 kilowatts-ish. Uh, that way I get the full capacity out of it. Uh, so with this, I'll be able to do about, you know, full capacity, about 70 plus kilowatt. Um, I think that would be that would be ideal for this. And uh, I'm gonna jack this up. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be heavy. Probably not easy to lift. Oh yeah, it's not. I'm gonna have a bring a pry bar or something and uh, lift this up, raise it so I can start um, seeing what's in there and uh, look under the hood and what my plan is with it. Um, on that note, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, I'll be working on this pack for, you know, until I get it all straightened out and I'll show you the finished product. So 
what I'm thinking with this also, instead of uh, doing a rack or these supposed to fit in a server rack, I think I have a tape measurement close by. This is supposed to be about 17 something. Uh, the width here is about 17 and a half, so I'm guessing that would fit because your typical rack is wider than that. So 17 and a half, and it should be about three, three feet long. I forgot what the actual measurement was. So we're looking at, yeah, 36 inches to the end of that. So it'll probably fit in a rack, but I think what I want to do, I have a lot of this uh, super stud stuff that I did solar panels with, um, and I like, really like this material. We use it at work all the time. It's pretty heavy duty. Um, build a, a rack out of this, basically just mounted just like so, and either weld a shelf for each one of these, or I can just bolt them sideways and just slide these up. And then at the end, I'll probably end up using some sort of foam here, um, inch or two inch, whatever fits here, and then seal that out, uh, make a proper cabinet. Uh, that way, when the heat comes in, it stays in the cabinet. I can have some sort of vent and a filter front and back. Um, that's, once I put these together, we'll, we'll figure out where we're going with that. Um, again, seems to be a, a good buy. Um, if you like these kind of videos, I'll keep putting those out. I'm gonna be, next I'll, tear this a pack or, or get it to a point where I can see what's under the hood and if I need to modify things to make it work. Because this connector right here, I'll come close for a second. This connector right here seems to be proprietary. It's a push pin type. I'll uh, take it apart and see who makes this. And that's gonna be you know, your positive and here's your negative connection. And I'm guessing it's gonna be the same one. And uh, this should be some sort of disconnect, and I'm guessing this would be right next to it. It's got three pins coming out. It must be some sort of communication um, or another voltage link to turn some relay on or something. And like I said, this is probably a BMS individually managing each pack um, and the fan, and that's not even connected, so it's so again, I'll keep putting these videos out, and if you're interested, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, again, everybody in the DIY community for helping out um, and putting all this information, um, you know, to help other people out, and enjoy the day. It's been a long one. Take care. Goodbye.